And Ostoji actually joking in chat about the fact that he was up at 3.5k at one point <laughs> in that game, saying that this is like MLG all over again, where he did suffer a tragic loss due to the same macro misstep. Well, we have TT1. First off, this is Shattered Temple, and we didn't get close by ground, so fist bump that, Sean. Boom! Now we have Fnatic TT1 spawning as the blue Protoss here at the 3 o'clock position, and close by air, we are going to have the Zerg player spawning as the purple Zerg from its goes to, it is Ostagi. And I think that's very important to note that Ostagi is going to be very happy to see that there's a Protoss here. It's going to be a pretty typical macro game at this point. I think a lot of Zergs do like this map if there's no close spawn. In particular, these destructible rocks at the back where you can get access to the third and then eventually access into the main. That is one of the most important points on the map. Zergs must, must, must take out those destructible rocks. Now, what is Ostoji going to be doing? Is he going to be going for that 15 hatch, or is he going to be getting that quick gas, that quick spawning pool, getting the speed up, and then taking the expansion? I would probably assume that it will be uh, to go ahead and get that pool and the gas down. We don't want to—he doesn't want to fall victim mm -hmm. to any forge pylon trickery that uh, sometimes Protoss players can do if they see that 15 hatch. Yeah, I, I, I personally think that, oh yeah, and there it is. I think yeah. there's nothing wrong at all with going for the fast speed. There's definitely enough players that don't early expand on this map. I mean, hell, look at this wide open space. It almost feels a lot like Metalopolis to a certain degree that you really do need to make sure that you can cover it properly with that building placement. But it looks like TT1, does that block? I think I was thinking the same thing. It does. I mean, there's this <laughs> optical illusion spot on all ramps where it almost never looks like it's a close-off, but it turns out it consistently is. We are seeing Fnatic TT1 continue to poke around that base with that one probe. He sees everything that's going on. And, you know, for all the criticism that we had at the start of the game, oh, TT1, how, how's he going to defend on Metalopolis? <laughs> TT1 really knows his stuff. He, he has only early expanded in almost all of his PVZs for over a year now. So I think he's probably the most experienced early expander in the business. Now going back to that forge just a little bit, for some of you newer players out there, if you do want to check if something actually completely walls off, pull a probe onto the other side, try to click on the other side and see what the shortest path the probe picks is. If it doesn't go through the top, then it actually will block off. And I love the fact that mm -hmm. Protoss players are starting to put pylons at the closest choke point behind their mineral line to make sure that nothing can run all the way around. We saw TT1 <laughs> do that last game, and Kiwi Kaki do it once before as well. It's like you say, JP, you're only going to lose to that once. Yep. There was one <laughs> game where Zerkman's waltz right into TT1's base, and he said, hmm, that doesn't feel great at all. <laughs> Let me make sure that never happens again. And as we see the double photon cannon defense getting set up, and as we have seen from the previous game, he knows exactly how to hold this off. Zerkman's now making their way to the front, where we have a nice wall off. And one gas for TT1. Like this delayed probe over on the left side going into the main now after he scouts the hatchery going down at the natural of Ostoji. He's going to see exactly what is going on. Will fall. Doesn't see any roach worn or anything like that. Total of six lings right now for the Zerg player right outside mm -hmm. of TT1 base. But those two cannons, or three cannons now, actually will make sure that he does not come anywhere near that nexus or that forge. Yeah, this is a super solid defense. Al almost certain that if he even had enough Mr. Stretch Armstrong uh, pylon space that he would plant the cybernetics core there. We don't see the core planting yet, instead favoring getting those early, early cannons. Now, Ostoji actually needs to time this out quite exactly. It's yep. quite... Oh my god! The Zerglings just march right into the main anyway for all our lauding of the protection at the front. <laughs> In the units lost tab, we do see that four units have been picked off. That is four Zerglings. Ostoji, oh my goodness, has marched directly into the main. This is the exact opposite of what TT1 wants. This is going to be a huge, huge annoyance. Although he might not be killing any probes at the moment, he's pulling, he's making sure TT1 does pull those probes off to either attack or to keep them oh, from so dying. Good. He's trying to pick off the little ones that do uh, get left behind. He's going to go ahead and try to get some of those from the gas. And all the probes were just pulled, but still four lings do remain. A zealot is about to pop out there from the gateway at the natural. And Ooh. is he going to use that to wall off? Yeah, it looks like he's going to try to completely wall off there at the natural instead of dealing with those lings in the main.
Yeah, this is actually a really dangerous spot for TT1. There was exactly one crack in that defense, and Ostoji abused it perfectly. And he didn't even abuse it with that many Zerglings, just eight Zerglings slipped through. We see six are dead, and the units lost tab two are alive. And in the meantime, here's that fragile spot that I was referring to. Ostoji really needs to make sure he does not miss a single Larva Inject, that he does not forget a single drone. And it looks like a little of that may have happened for Ostoji, so though he broke in, his advantage is not nearly as good as it should be. Another extractor being put down there in the main evolution chamber as well. He knows exactly what TT1 is up to at the moment as the last Ling gets taken out there by that self. Overlords abound all the way around TT1's north part of his base, but none of them, excuse me, one of them has snuck over here to the natural. It's going to move in for just a little bit, see exactly what's going on and fall back. Stalker's about to pop out. It can definitely kill this Overlord, and that will actually put Ostoji into the red supply. He's currently supply capped with 700, 600 minerals. Does have a spine crawler going down, but he's continuing to drone this entire time. Is that Overlord? No, the Overlord's definitely dead. So yeah, this Overlord is super the deadest Overlord ever, but is he going to be killed by the deadest Stalker ever? Oh, Stoji controlling this really well, but only manages to do a little bit of oh. damage. And will he get it? It looks like he's going to... Oh, oh at 12 health, the Stalker stays alive. TT1 always happy to get that little edge, but four more Zerglings are going to come in. Will the cleanup crew be effective? No, they are heading right back home again. Plus one for the Zerglings, but we don't see a third hatch anywhere for Ostoji. He's starting to work away at these rocks, but he really would have liked to build that third much earlier. It's going to be rough to defend this big five gate plus robo push incoming for tt1 we also see the plus one weapons being upgraded for tt1 so it's going to be your pretty standard push that a lot of protosses have been doing roach worm about halfway complete osoji's lair is almost complete there about 90 percent still though like you said he only has two hatcheries he has 1200 minerals currently so we are going to be seeing a hatcher immediately go down when these destructible rocks do indeed fall to those zerglings one thing that Ostoji is doing is having great creep spread almost mm -hmm. stretch out into the middle of the map. Ooh, but this is going to be very dangerous. We see the burrow and speed, the classic gateway defense mixture, but the observer is also popping out as well. And this very awkwardly placed pylon is going to be extremely difficult for the Zerg player to spot. The six warp gate, no doubt, will be able to do plenty of damage, but TT1 not trying to win immediately. Gearing up to try to take down these destructible rocks as well. While this giganto push is going on, he can take himself a third base. And if I'm in Ostoji's shoes, I'm immediately going to start producing nothing but roaches. And I am actually quite uncomfortable about this in Ostoji's shoes. I really wish that I could be droning right now. Well, he is currently droning. He's also making a couple of blinks. There's the infestation pit. He leaves the rocks at 20, goes back, makes sure that they are actually dead. He can now take his third with ease. Robotics Bay going down very, very quickly there from TT1. He wants to get those Colossus out on the field. Immortal currently out from that uh, first robotic facility. And <laughs> not sure what that was that just died. Sean, can you give me a quick recap? Uh, yes, indeed, TT1 tried to kill off one of his own pylons to unleash uh, a complete wall in that he accidentally made. But he killed the pile that was warping in a zealot, so of course they screamed, why, oh why, this makes no sense to bring me onto the battlefield in the first place. Now that we have that robotics bay down, it looks like, wow, TT1, interestingly, not going to be going for any big attack. He's actually taking a third fairly early, but uh -oh. Ostoji knocked down those destructible rocks. This was that key attack point we mentioned earlier. Are the lings going to be going in anytime soon? They're still sitting right there at the bottom of the ramp, and now he's actually taking them under his control. The Nexus is only about 800 HP, and the lings have started taking it down. A couple of photon cans are going to be tried to warp in. He does get the Nexus to cancel, I believe. He's make sure he runs away from the army of TT1. First Colossus very close to being finished. The Twilight Council going down as well. As a Spire, the Pathogen Glands, Ostoji is kind of all over the place right now when it comes to tech. Yeah, Ostoji getting a lot of different tech paths up. I'm very curious to see how he's going to distribute that gas. I mean, it's always important to get Corruptors against the Colossi in theory, but you can't really afford tons of Infestors and tons of Corruptors when you only have these six geysers just started. So we do see TT1 has a relatively small force. This is going to be quite vulnerable to those Infestors if Ostoji does get a good engagement and we see oh uh -oh. stoji still knowing that that bottom area is where he wants to stay focused tt1 is not aware that 
Ostoji has moved over here to the south, and maybe he is, is that's actually exactly where he's going. He's trying to cut off these roaches, and he might actually do so, Sean. Is he going to be able uh -oh. to drop the... Oh! oh! He turns away at the last possible second. The Ling and Small Roach count did once again deny this third. TT1 looks like he just is going to push into the Zerg's base and take out some three tumors on the way. And oh no, it looks like he does have enough for the fungal growth. Look at how clustered that army is. And oh my god, he gets a decent fungal growth. And there's the huge fungal on all the zealots, trapping them in place. We see the roaches now swinging in from behind. But this push timing from TT1 is fantastic. Ostoji trying to regroup with the rest of his roaches. TT1, I think, may have demonstrated why he is such a solid pvz -er, But oh no, the counterattack from Ostoji counterattacks the flavor of the month. Four Zergs realizing the amount of pain that they can bring for these Protoss Death Balls are only strong if you confront them directly. If you keep sidestepping them, there is not much that they can do. And suddenly, Ostoji is in a ton of trouble. We see that the Roaches trying to swing around were hit by a Colossus on the high ground. Action's heating up all over the map. And uh oh, back at the main base, there is a huge confrontation between these two forces. A big fungal going down on a lot of zealots. There are the force fields. Ostoji, however, oh, running no. into another Colossus, and he will no, take it down. Gets it. There still are two remaining. The roaches that snuck into the into the natural of TT1 were taken out. Now we're doing ring around the rosy here in the middle of the shattered temple with some roaches, some lings, infestors, and TT1's entire army, and they are oh starting no. to hit the infestors. Oh, no, the fungals, no. and he doesn't. He just had enough energy for those two fungal growths, but that has dried up. How many corruptors does he have? Well, he does have a corruptor, which is definitely better than nothing. This great ring around the rosy tactic from Ostoji is going to allow him to regroup with the rest of his army. He's moving in. He's going forward. Does he have enough for some force fields? He has plenty for force fields. He is trying to advance forward, but we see TT1 just producing a few too many units. The Colossus control is remarkable. Ostoji going on the run again. Those Colossus really are the bane of Ostoji's existence right now. They are just doing so much damage to those roaches. There's only a handful of corruptors from the Zerg player. Three right now, two more about to hatch, and this might be the last stand here from the Zerg player. And it looks like the Corruptor is doing some decent damage. Where is that last band of roaches coming from behind? And he does manage to get all the Colossi taken down, but sadly it is going to be another Colossus coming in from the right. Stalker, Immortal, a single Colossus, TT1, showing total domination in this game. But is he still going to be able to close it out? It's basically a committed two-base attack from TT1. If Ostoji holds this, then he does win. He did take out one of the four pylons there of the Protoss army. And is still able to warp in, though, from his main base. And this is just looking like too much. That 1-1 one, one upgrade from TT1, as well as the Colossus, that did just fall. Now all of the Corruptors have fallen. And there's GG. the good game. TT1 breaks his curse and manages to advance in the lower bracket there he is a big relief on his face ostoji put up a great performance but wasn't able to close out the series yep and that that is too bad tt1 looks uh, a little shaken up honestly after that win maybe just more relieved than shaken up uh, of anything but he advanced with the 2-0 win another 2-0 here sean in the tournament that is all that we have seen all day long and there is the canadian player from it's gosu ostoji now eliminated here from the North American Invitational. Looking noticeably distraught, but definitely played a great series. Yeah. We didn't quite see the same caliber of play as what he delivered this morning. Because, you know, when you're going up against a player like Huck, sometimes that can ease your mind. You go in thinking, well, you know, I'll play my best. He's one of the best in the world. It's a fun yeah. chance to play with him. But then when you're suddenly down elimination, you put that added pressure of, gosh, I have to play well. I must do everything spot on. And we saw a lot of larva injects missed. Some of the transitions were a little bit slow, but still incredibly clever tactics tactical movement. Yep, but it is too bad. I felt like he definitely was a different player altogether uh, in between mm -hmm. those two mm -hmm. matches against Huck and against TT1. But let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket and see exactly where we stand and also which match we're going to be bringing up next to you guys. I believe it will be the second lower bracket mm -hmm. match. So let's take a look at those brackets, guys. And there we go. We are going to be bringing you Kiwi Kaki versus DDE here in just a couple of minutes. TT1 will advance. He's going to play the loser, I believe, 
of, is it the Sheth Idra match? Because I know they switch somewhere in the bracket. Yes, it is impossible to play the same person twice in that lower bracket setup. So it will mean that Fnatic TT1 will be up against the loser of Sheth Idra. It is another PVZ. And we've seen very different PVZ styles out of almost all the Protosses we've had the treat of casting here. Yeah. I mean, Huck with his crazy blink gateway <laughs> focus. We've seen TT1 do uh, a little bit more standard play, but with that extra panache with the um, the double robotics facility yeah, yeah. doing the double immortal play, the aggression at the start. And then Kiwi Kaki's just zany builds in general. 